and welcome back. We are going to discuss today probabilistic algorithms or as they are sometimes also called randomized algorithms. So two names but same thing. This is the last chapter in our syllabus and there will be quite a few questions from here which will be easy to understand and answer. So from scoring point of view this is an important chapter but the most interesting factor is as far as usage of algorithms are concerned, probabilistic algorithms does really well than the other types of algorithms. So you will gain if you concentrate on the discussions from both exam point of view as well as practical use point of view. So today in this session, what all we are going to discuss? We are going to discuss what is probabilistic algorithm, what are the advantages of probabilistic algorithms, what are the utility of probabilistic algorithms in the real field so far and we will also go through uh, formally probabilistic Turing machine and then we will also have some definitions about types of probabilistic algorithms then we will see the complexity classes arising out of these algorithms then we will also see some amplification lemmas and also with time permits we will also see uh, how the proof of primality testing is done using randomized algorithms. So this is the whole session outline and now I am going to discuss about what, what are probabilistic algorithms and why probabilistic algorithms. See the name implies probabilistic algorithm that means there are two words included there probability and algorithm. So basically what we are doing here is to the algorithm we are injecting some probability concept to its lifeline so that it can result some expected uh, outcome which can be of practical use. Otherwise in many situations in algorithmic decision problems we have results which are not always acceptable. Anyway, so let me continue the advantages of such algorithms. The advantages of such algorithms are mainly two major advantages. Number one is the execution time and space required by such algorithms are often less than that of best deterministic algorithms. This is the best advantage. Now the other advantage is this is simple to understand and also easy to implement. And these two advantages have made these algorithms popular. Now, as far as utility of such algorithms are concerned, these algorithms have been applied widely into different fields, today, starting from communication technology to bioinformatics to healthcare to robotics to mathematics to computer science and to various other fields. This is being continuously used and we are having better results. Now, to tell you a very practical example from computer science point of view, today in software industry, uh, in the software libraries, they are using a sort function. This sort function is nothing but the quick sort algorithm. Now, why they are using this quick sort algorithm? Because it has been found using randomized algorithms that the quick sort does fare well in average case. Basically, this is a uh, big O of n log n is the time complexity. And even in worst case, using randomized algorithms, it is x squared. So, definitely the result is very impressive. And this quick sort has been used in the libraries of Java and .NET. So, this is one example from software industry. There are various other examples in selecting algorithm, in searching algorithms. Uh, this is an important information for you that Google today is using distributed randomized algorithm for their search problem as well. So if you uh, research or if you are interested you can research on this and you will get very interesting papers uh, which are concerning this Google search problem using probabilistic algorithms. And not only this, uh, very recently uh, there is a query language which has been discovered in uh, database tools. This is called Bayesian query language. This Bayesian query language 
is based on probabilistic approach. So, so this is basically giving rather a little better uh, results than the standard query language. This example works like this. In standard query language, if a statement is like this, select name, comma, salary from EMP where age is greater than 40. Maybe it will result uh, to records. But in PQL, that is Bayesian query language, if we give the statement like infer name, comma, salary, where age is greater than 40 with confidence 0 0.7, it will result maybe more than two records because at the back end, the probabilistic capability will find out some more records which may be probabilistically satisfy the conditions. Hence, these are also sometimes acceptable because not at every case uh, all the informations will be available. Sometimes some information may not be available and hence there are question mark in those information. But we can apply probabilistic algorithms there so to uh, infer some decisions on them and get some results. So this way there are many other examples like in robotics the uh, navigational position of a robot is also found using randomized algorithms without even being uh, any information uh, prior to finding it out we get the navigational coordinates from randomized algorithms for a robot. So this is uh, one kind of utility in robotics. There are various other types of utility in robotics as well. So now we can go for the formal definition of a probabilistic Turing machine. A probabilistic Turing machine is a non-deterministic Turing machine where each non-deterministic step is a coin flip step. That, that means the Turing machine decides its next state of action depending on a random input. So it can go to the left or it can go to the right. That, if it, that decision depends on a point of view. So this way we can define a probabilistic Turing machine. So formally if M is a probabilistic Turing machine, W is an input, V is the branch of the probabilistic Turing machine, then PRP is equal to probability of the branch of the Turing machine which is basically equal to 1 by 2 to the power k where k is the 